Today we're going to be installing the Blue Wave system on a 2005 Ford F-150. The basic components that will come in your kit are the mix separator tank, the converter, you have a switch box, the enhancers right here, and that's about it. The first thing you have to keep in mind, the first thing you have to do is find the best location under the hood to fit all the equipment, keeping in mind that the mix separator tank has to be higher than the converter itself does to keep the flow even. This is a mix separator tank. The water flows out of the bottom of this into the converter, and then the hydrogen and oxygen comes back up out of the converter into this side port here. The water drops off, and the gases rise up to the top, come out of this, and go straight into the engine intake. This component is where the hydrogen is, is actually created. The water mix goes into this bottom fitting here, comes up through here, and through electrolysis, by the time it comes out of the top, it's in a hydrogen form. This is a switch box that'll be located on the dash. It's a simple on-off switch to turn the entire system off, and this yellow light will flash when the fluid level in the mix tank gets too low. We've determined that on this 2005 F-150 with a 5.4 liter Triton in it, that the best location for the mounting is right behind the headlight down here in the hole. And we decided to put our mix separator tank right up here where it's easy to get to, so it's easy to fill the top off when, need, when needed. Okay, I'm just finishing tightening up everything inside here. Uh, we found a good location to mount everything. Your unit will come pre-wired with all this already on there, so you don't have to worry about any of that. The, it does come with brackets already installed in it. You may have to do some modifications to meet your specific needs. And you can mount the units at up to a 45 degree angle, but it is best to have them as straight as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and put our mix separator tank in. We found a really good location for it up here. We mounted this one right in front of the air intake, right between the air intake tube and the course port itself. It was a really nice fit. The next thing you need to do is find a suitable location for your switch. It needs to be up and out of the way where it won't get kicked all the time, but still easily accessible to be able to flip system on and off and see the fluid level indicator. After you mount the switch box inside the truck then you need to run the blue and black wires through the firewall and all the way up to the unit. The black wire will attach to one of the black wires on the float sensor on the tank and the blue wire will go on the outer terminal that's not used yet on the relay. The inner terminal does not get used for anything. The other set of wires coming off the switch box and the gray sheath run over to your fuse box. Find a fuse that's only on when the key is turned on, pull it out, plug this add a circuit in, and then put your fuses right back in. The other wire just goes to a good ground source under the dash anywhere. Now we took the one black wire off the sensor on the mix tank and put it to the blue wire on the switch box. The other black wire on the sensor just goes directly to ground. The wire that goes to the battery, I've just routed up through here, runs all the way across the truck, and it's up here at the battery. Connection's real simple, you just loosen the bolt, put it underneath there, and then as far as the grounds go on these units here, as long as they're bolted directly to metal, they'll ground themselves. If it's bolted to plastic, you just need to add a ground strap from the mounting bolt to something metal. You need to cut your hoses to length. The shorter they are, the better they are. Make sure there's no kinks or anything in them. The hoses on the side of the tank go into the top of the units down here, and the fittings on the bottom of this tank will go into the bottom of these. The only connection you have to make to the engine is from this fitting here up to the intake tube. Ford's made this one easy, and they've already got a port on here, but most of the time you'll have to drill a hole and put the supplied fitting in the hole and then connect that hose there.
pretty much concludes the basic install of the kit. The last thing you really got to do is check all your wiring, make sure you don't have anything hanging loose that might get caught up in moving parts. Um, you know, tie up anything you had apart inside in the dash, make sure all your wires are tied up underneath so your foot doesn't catch a hold of them, and top it off with the required fluids, and you're ready to go.